Welcome to B. Taylor Outdoors. I'm Ben. Today we're talking about how to run an HRC finish test. So you are wanting to learn how to run a HRC finish test? Um, first off, let me go kind of through the timeline and I'll put all these times down in a timestamp down below in the description so you can kind of bounce around to what you want to watch. But the first thing we're going to do is just sit down and talk about the elements of the test, kind of what you need to train for, just things like that. The next next segment is going to be talking about the setup. So you're, I'll show you the setup that I'm set up to run. Then we're actually going to run Bell on the setup. Then we're going to talk about how she did on that setup and think if and to see if she's going to go on to the next series if she would pass that test. So first, let's talk about the elements elements of the test or the things that you're going to see in the test a triple on land triple on water land blind water blind a diversion and an honor so your landmarks can be out to 150 yards your watermarks can be out to 125 yards and your blinds can be out to 100 yards so land and water can be out to 100 yards then the diversion can be thrown at any point in time in the test and the honor can be on land or water so just wherever the judges want to put the honor, that's where they're going to put it. So some things you might want to train for and try to make see if you're ready to run a, the test is I'd be running good marks out to on land, probably out to 225, maybe 250. I want to be able to run multiples out to say 175, 200, like push that dog. But also remember in your training, you need to kind of bring it back in because you may be running a real tight land series or they may throw a wipeout bird right across the dog's face. Just things like that that you might want to train for. So water, I'd probably be looking at 175 to 200 yards, being able to run multiples out to those distances as well. They may not be perfect, but just being able to run out to that distance is going to be nice. But remember, I've I have run finish test in ponds that were maybe 25 by 50 yards and all the birds are just wham bam bam just splashing right there in front of you so you got to be prepared for that um so your blinds i'd probably be running out to 150 to 175 yards running them through your factors because they can judges in finish can put a blind wherever they want so through the arc, uh, or under the arc, through the area of the fall, outside of the area of the fall, behind the gun, even just outside of the test. They can even run a poison bird if they really want to. I haven't seen it, and I've talked to some judges, and they don't think it's really something that they would ever see a lot of in finish tests, but they can throw a poison bird if they want to in a finish test. When we're talking about marks and land blinds and things like that, you got to be under control. So if your dog is loose at the line when you got a shotgun in your hand, which is in something you're going to need to prepare for, you need to be able to handle a shotgun, just be prepared for it, be prepared for jams, things like that. Just some little things that can mess you up that's not really part of the test, but they can fluster your head and make you just kind of freak out a little bit. Don't worry about it. Just keep going through the motions with the shotgun. But going back into that control type stuff, you need to be able to have your dog under control from the holding blind to the bucket. They need to sit nice and steady at the line. You need to have, if you blow a whistle, they need to stop. When you give a cast, they need to change direction and take that cast. So, like I said, with when I'm talking about like landmarks or even land blinds or any of, any of the blinds, when I give a cast, I want that dog to change direction. And normally in finish, they, you want to see them cross the line or make progress to the blind itself. So you'll see that when we run our land blind. Some just odd things that you might want to do. Oh, let me talk about diversions as well. Diversions can be thrown anywhere and at any point in time. Also the marks. They can specify what order to pick the birds up in. So you may be used to picking up outside outside or middle outside outside or checking down and picking up a bird they may even throw throw them out of order but tell you to go and pick up the short bird first and then but the last bird down was the long bird so 
judges can do a whole lot of fun stuff in finished they can try to mess with you don't let them do that to you just train train hard when you know you're ready to run a finished go run your finish test and go smoke it so just some other weird things that you can do in finish tests that I've seen personally you can do um, dog stands being in waders so make sure you bring your waders or hip boots whatever you normally wear make sure you bring those to the test because there's a chance you can be running off a dog stand you can also run out of a dog um, blind little field dog blind so just I would put throw those into your training just a little bit just so the dog's used to it it's not when you show up to the test first time they've ever seen it you want to be prepared for whatever they can throw at you so also I've been in a layout blind in the middle of a field a whole bunch of geese goose decoys all around that's another thing you might see decoys I'm not seeing it as much as I used to but there's still every once in a while you'll get a judge that wants to go and throw two or three dozen full body goose decoys out in the middle of the field which I'll give you a hint if they throw snow goose decoys out there you can wear white you don't have to wear camo it actually specifies that in the rule book so if you see a snow goose out there go grab your white coat so hopefully you got a little bit out of that if I've missed something or didn't talk about something and you're watching this and you've already run a finished test comment it down below let me know so then everybody else in, that watches these videos can read the comments and maybe learn something from you so let's go look at the setup and run bell and then i'll let you know how she does okay so you're gonna start out holding blind you're gonna walk out of the holding blind sit down on bucket or chair load three shells for the start of this test first one's gonna come out this hay bale here that's gonna be bird number one and it's gonna go left to right angled in second bird is over the road in the hay bale in the middle thrown right to left angled back a little bit and then our last bird and our go bird is gonna be the long hay bale out here and it goes right to le or left to right as well and it's pretty much a flat throw so that's going to be our test or for the marks now the blind after you pick up the three three marks coming back and you're going to run a blind on the left side of the hay bale where the short bird came out and it's about 100 yards the short bird is around 50 the middle bird is around 70 and the long bird is around 105, I think. So that's gonna be the test. And I forgot to mention earlier that I'm gonna have a diversion after the blind. So when she's coming back with the blind, I'm gonna throw a bird off to the left-hand side, shoot it when she's on the way back from the, the blind. So that'll be the test. And let's see how Belle does. I'm not running her with a collar. So this is almost as close to a testing scenario as I can get without having a bunch of judges and people here. So see how she does. Okay, before we run Bell, I'll go ahead and tell you, I got two marks, the middle and the long bird. They kind of land almost in line with each other. So just pay attention to that when Bell gets in ready to run, which is something you want to pay attention to when the test dog. So get there if this is your first finish test, get there with the test dog, watch the test dog run. You can learn a lot from that. You can see where the birds are landing, things like that. So let's watch Bell run this setup.
Ooh, those are tight. Heel. Sit. Sit. Watch. Here. Sit. Watch. Good. No. Sit. Sit. Good. Right there. Good. There goes one. Here. 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 Sit. Fetch. Sit. Good girl. Heel. Heel. 
She didn't do great. I think she would still be in. She would be marginal on her landmarks because of that handle on the longbird. So like I said, I didn't specify an order that she had to pick them up. She just had to go pick them up. She went and picked up that middle bird, picked it up clean, came back, picked up the short right hand bird clean. Good. But the long bird on the left, we had that handle. It wasn't great. There was a couple of cast refusals, things like that. Handled her all the way to the bird like you're supposed to. So just some things like that. The land blind was really nice. There was one little scallop. I don't think that would have really hurt us that bad. But going into the water series, I know that I can't have a handle on a mark. Need to have a pretty good water blind and be able to sit on the honor. And I think we would be able to pass if we can pick up the three water marks. If we can pick up the three water marks, we're great. So I want to thank y'all for watching. If y'all haven't already, go ahead, and, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget, their season never ends.